Good morning. I am Carissa. Um, I can't hardly believe that next week, next Sunday, is Christmas Eve, and I'm loving all of the fun Christmas sweaters that so many of you wore this morning. Uh, welcome officially to First Presbyterian Worship at 9 on the third Sunday of Advent. Our theme today is Welcome the Baby Jesus, and Keith will be sharing that message later on in worship. To everyone who's joining us online, we want to say thank you for spending time with us today and pray that you'll be blessed. Please fill out the connection card and that you'll find in the pew in front of you and drop it with your offering as you leave today. Thank you for supporting us through the year. We have truly been blessed. This is another reminder that we will not have the morning worship services next Sunday on Christmas Eve, but we do invite you to uh, the 5 p.m. worship, family worship, or the 9 p.m. lessons and carols, or both. Um, both of those will be candlelight services. Uh, the 5 p.m. family worship will involve all children who are here, and it will be an interactive telling of the Christmas story and everyone playing their part. The choir will lead us in the lessons and carols at 9 p.m., and Keith will be giving, it says I will be giving, but I will not be giving. Keith will be giving a short message at both of those services, so please invite your friend. Christy will be giving it, not Keith or I, but Pastor Christy. Uh, please invite your friends or family to come along. Big thank you to everyone who has returned their gift to God card, as we are just over 80% of our way to those pledges. If you have not returned it, uh, we encourage you to fill it out and leave it in the offering boxes or mail it to the office. And again, we thank you for your support. The PCUSA Christmas Joy offering will be received from December 17th through December 31st. This offering helps and supports the leaders within the church as it provides assistance to current and retired church workers and their families in their time of need. It also helps develop leaders in schools and colleges in equipping communities of color. Please take a look in the parlor after worship today. Um, there are some thank you cards and messages from our friends at Lincoln McCandless um, and the children there as I thank the mission committee for their church, for our church and supplying them with snacks in their classrooms um, and those are displayed on the table. So let's call, let's watch our call to worship and then Cassandra and Corrine will be lighting our Advent wreath. In our church, as we gather around our Advent wreath, we pray our unlimited joy to fill our lives as we light the candles of hope, peace, and now the candle of joy. In a world that is lacking the joy that comes from you alone, Lord, May we share the joy of knowing you to all we meet. Dear God, please be with us during this week so that we bring hope, peace, and joy, not just to our lives, but may we shine these things in our world with a simple smile and unexpected laughter. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, good to see you all here. It's, uh, it's Caitlin's birthday today, and... Uh, I know, yeah. 21 again. <laughs> Just a year older than me. Uh, but it's good. So we'll, we'll lit three candles for her, not just for her, but uh, we, we, we told her we'd light a candle for her, so there, there you go. Let's stand and let's worship. Welcome uh, to our worship this morning. 
This is called the house of the Lord. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, we'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet, we'll shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave and my God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Because we were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. And what is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Wonderful. I think we we'll always have to remember that there is joy in the house of the Lord. There should be joy, and we should be excited about coming into His presence. And this is Christmas time, and it's all about babies. We have two new babies here. We have Maggie Rose down here, and we have Oliver has just arrived. Oliver's about three days. Four days, yeah, and he didn't want to miss worship today, so 
Um, welcome. And we welcome new children and new people. We have, get, we have visitors here today too. We're delighted that uh, you're, you're with us. And we'd love to chat to you after our worship time. If you have time. It's a busy time of the year. We know that. This song we haven't sang for a long, long time. It's called The Same Love. You choose the humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal the brokenness inside and give us life. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see is calling us. Please be seated. I'm going to pray and then Caitlin's going to read to you.
Lord, we just thank you that we can come here as we approach Christmas and we approach the day of your birth, Lord. And we ask that you'll help us to settle. We would ask for your peace and your hope and your joy to fill our lives. We pray, Lord, that we can take a deep intake of breath this week and stop and think of you, to draw close to you. Lord, be with us, be with our friends, our family, be with us as we gather together over this Christmas period. And let us lift you high and let us make you center of everything that is happening and everything that we do. And may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture passage is Luke 1, 23, 26 through 55, and I am reading from the New International Version. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed you are among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. There's more, sorry. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. To her. Mary's song. Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been merciful, or mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has fulfilled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Tom, we'll just hold the video one second. And the sons of earth. We'll invite um, Doug Armstrong to come up. Doug, and we'll... Christy will, will bring you in officially as a deacon. All right. Hi, 
Hi, Doug. Hi, Christy. All by yourself today. I think so. You don't feel awkward, do you? Kind of. Okay. Did you before I pointed it out? No. Okay. I, I got tipped off. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the way this is going to work is I'm going to ask you the questions and then after you answer them, I'm going to have you turn around and face the congregation, and then I'm going to ask them their questions. And then we're going to ask anybody here who's already been ordained as a deacon to come up and lay hands on you, and then we're going to pray. Okay? Is that good with all of you, too? Okay. Okay, good. And Doug is being ordained as a deacon in our church. Doug, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our church confessions? I do. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbor, and work for the reconciliation of the world? I do. Do you promise to further the peace and unity of the church? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I do. Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try and show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I do. Okay, now you can turn and face the congregation. The con to the congregation of First Presbyterian, do we, the members of this church, accept Doug Armstrong as a deacon chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, we do. We do. do we agree to pray for him, to encourage him, to respect his decisions, and to follow as he guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Okay, I now invite those who have been ordained as a deacon to please come forward. You can turn and face me, Doug. And please lay hands. Let's pray. Lord, we lift to you this morning your servant, Doug. We are grateful for his willingness to serve this congregation and this community as a deacon. The role of deacon is spelled out in the Holy Scriptures. It's one of the oldest roles in the church. And we are grateful for his willingness and the willingness of all who has served as deacons. And we pray that you will guide his leadership in this role Maybe he, let, may he be a blessing to all he serves, and we pray for this congregation as we uphold him as he, as he serves this role in the best of his ability. May all that he does and says be for your glory. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you for your willingness to serve. The sons of earth toil under dark, rolling storms. The daughters of the land carry their own loads of strife. And out of the inky night, the shepherds guard the vulnerable that sit under their care and wait for dawn's helping hand. Then, without warning, a horizon is born, not from beneath the earth, but from heaven above, bending every knee that witnesses it flooding hard hearts with wonders of light and love, striking fear and awe into the bravest soul. It blinds those who see. It gives sight to those who don't. The good news of great joy streams from the mouths of angels. He has been born, Christ the Lord. 
So leaving the only security they know, the shepherds flee their fields, the magi leave their homes, all toward the light of hope they'd heard of all their lives with zeal flowing through their veins. And look into the eyes of the author of light and life. They touch the fingers of the hand that formed them and watch the breath of God appear in the world he made. The earth, once hunched with despair, lifts her head and receives her king. And the men who God chose to tell run through Bethlehem and sound the joy, shout the wonders of his love to all who hear. Your eternal king is born. Just one week to go. Hard to believe, isn't it? We find all our, ourselves doing all these things that usually happen coming on the run up to Christmas. Christmas Eve can be chaotic as all the men try and get out and get a Christmas present bought that they forgot to buy. Although I haven't been out and about yesterday, there was an awful lot of men out and about yesterday getting their presents. So maybe we've got our act together. But as we prepare for Christmas, we're preparing here at church, obviously, for our five o'clock uh, and our nine, nine o'clock worship services in the evening. But, you know, there can be a lot of confusion. So we have confused you by saying, right, we have no morning worship next Sunday. We have just our normal 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. services. But our minds are already confused, aren't they? Because there's so many things still has to be done. We can't believe that we haven't got down all our list yet. Here's me telling you, I don't even have a list, all right? Uh, my list is taken care of. I just need to know all's okay. Anybody else like that? Yeah, come on. Come on, man. Let us know. Yeah, nod. No. They're not giving it up. But when it comes to Christmas, we feel like our world, I think, gets turned upside down. Because the normal routine stops. And if you think that your world gets turned upside down, just imagine being in Mary's shoes all those years ago. You know, Mary is one of my favorite biblical character. She's a real hero. She's a remarkable young girl. Let's be honest, there was no way that Mary was expecting for an angel to show up while she was doing the housework. It wasn't on her horizon, it wasn't on her agenda, it wasn't on her to-do list, meet with the angel. But that's what happened. Her world was turned upside down in an instant. Because the angel came with a message from God that seemed totally impossible and hard to believe. I don't know about you, but I think God always has this idea and notion that he wants to do things that seem impossible to us and seem very probable to him. We see this right throughout Scripture time and time again. But picture the scene. Here we have Mary, this young girl, who was doing the chores around the house when she was stopped in her tracks by an angel who had this strange and unbelievable message for her. This is not biblical words. This is my words, so don't think I'm reading from some strange version of the Bible. But the angel appeared and went, Hi, hey, Mary. No need to worry. Yeah, sure. But you will have a baby son called Jesus, and he will be the son of God and the awaited Messiah. No need to worry. Everything's going to be fine. And you have to laugh in a way as at Mary's response. In today's terms, I think she would have said, What? What are you saying? I can't have a baby. Joseph and I haven't even held hands yet. I'm not that type of girl to fool around. What are you talking about? 
To say that Mary found herself in a really awkward and difficult situation is a complete understatement. And I don't know about, about you, but I reckon that the gospel writers had to have left, left out a big part of a very interesting discussion that Mary must have had with the angel. Can you imagine what was going through her mind? I've always wondered, was her first reaction one of disappointment? It doesn't say it anywhere in Scripture. But I'm just wondering, what went through her mind? Was her dream of a normal life with her Prince Charming just disappearing in the blink of an eye? Her hopes for a normal life were turned completely upside down in an instant. What would her family say? What would the neighbors say? What would the city say? Would she become an outcast? So much for this young girl to process. And yet when we read the scripture, she was ready to welcome the baby Jesus into her life. She had to have so much trust and faith in her God. And the Bible is full of stories where people's lives have been turned upside down. Or I've heard it said that a better way to say that is God doesn't turn our lives upside down. He turns them right side up. It's as if God, with a tap on his shoulder, says, you're it. I'm going to use you in my salvation plan. I choose you. We've talked about this before. Every one of us are chosen by God. The big question for you and me today is, are we waiting for that tap on the shoulder? I can assure you that if you follow Jesus, that tap on the shoulder will come at some stage. But sadly, so many in church today ignore that tap on the shoulder and quickly move on to the next thing on their list. But Mary didn't. Mary didn't. She grasped her destiny, and the rest is history, as we say. If we're all honest, we want to long, we long for peace and stability in our lives. But that's not usually the way God works. He often turns things on its head so that we can fulfill our true destiny. God made Mary a partner in the fulfillment of his purpose for the world. And he wants to do the same with each one of us. He wants us to play a part with him in his big salvation plan for the world. It amazes me that for such a young girl, Mary got it. Mary just got it. She accepted what God was saying. She saw God's plan and she was all in. We know she's all in because she breaks out and dance. She sings her song. She worships her God. She dances around the house. Just like all good Presbyterians do on a Sunday morning when they come to church. Where we dance around and we get so excited. Mary was just overjoyed. Overjoyed that God had called her. She was praising God. This amazing God who turns hopeless lives right side up who changes everything. In the Bible, Christmas was a time when everything was turned right side up for the people who have been waiting for generations and generations for God's intervention in their lives. They have been waiting for the Messiah. And Christmas is about what happened to Mary, an unexpected teenager, an unwed mother, it's about the cry for help of a woman. No, a child at a crisis pregnancy line. It's about the down and out person on Main Street whose welfare check is long used up. Christmas is even about the father who neglects his child and the parent who screams at her child in frustration. Christmas is about God's offer to turn your world and my world right side up. 
It's about the gift of unconditional love and grace that surpasses all our understanding. The amazing thing is that this message did not come through official channels sanctioned by the church and the government. It was delivered in a song by the angels to a group of shepherds working the night shift in the cool, cold fields of Bethlehem. God was willing to send his son, the savior of the world, to be born into a world of disappointment, pain, and fear. Born not all, only into Mary's world, but into our world, your world, my world. You know, when God tapped me on the shoulder and told me to leave my business, I had to go. I just had to go. I just knew it was right. When he tapped again and said, it's time to move to Hutchison, the bags had to be packed again. Why? Why? Because if we didn't, we would be selling God short. We'd not, we wouldn't be trusting in his divine plan for our lives. God has a plan for each one of you, for each one of us. He's looking to tap you on the shoulder and say, come with me. Come on, I've chosen you. Come on, we have stuff to do. It's exciting times. As a congregation, we have heard his call to reconciliation and forgiveness in many different ways. And many of us have responded to God's invitation by taking the risk just like Mary and saying yes to God, doing things that we normally wouldn't have done, but doing it because we know God was calling us to it. Faith in God's gracious plan for our lives is a risk that it will turn our normal world upside down in so many ways and bring such joy and fulfillment and purpose. It's about trusting in the Word of God, about doing His will in order for our world to be turned the right side up. God's plan for your life and His will is always good, always. It's for your benefit, but it's not painless. It won't always be easy. Just look at Mary. This wasn't Mary's plan. She hadn't written it in her journal that one day I want an angel to turn up and tell me I'm going to have the son of I'm going to have be the mother of the son of God. But it was God's plan. And Mary was open to whatever God had for her life. I wish I could say that. I wish we could all say that's the way we we live our lives, just open to what God wants us to do. The Christmas story was never Mary and Joseph's dream of how they wanted to welcome their first child into the world. But it was part of a much bigger plan and they got it. They got it. They welcomed the baby Jesus with open arms. Are we still welcoming him into our lives with arms wide open? Is there room for Jesus this Christmas and all the chaos and all the preparations and all the planning. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus today in our lives? You know, at the right time, God can do anything. God can do more in one millisecond than we can do in our entire lives. At the right time, God will do his will. The Bible says at the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen, Isaiah 60 and 22. You see, we have a God who doesn't worry about time as we worry about time. We, we have a God who doesn't need time to accomplish what he wants to do. Time means nothing to him. It's hard for us to comp comprehend when everything we do is dictated by time. We're now looking at our watches and saying it's about time Keith was actually starting to wind this up because we need to get home. There's things to be done. Isn't that right? We, we have this appointment and this thing to do. Time is so important to us. So important. It's hard for us 
to actually wait and be still. The most difficult place for any of us to be is in God's waiting room, I call it. Is that where you would say you are right now? Are you in a hurry for something to happen and God isn't? That's God's waiting room. For me in life, I've always found he has made me wait in that waiting room until I'm nearly like gripping on with, with my fingertips and I'm nearly ready to drop. I seem to have been waiting there for a long time. But I need to hold on and I need to hold on and then God comes through. That's God's waiting room. When you're in God's waiting room, you tend to wonder, is it ever going to happen? Will it happen at all? But God doesn't need a lot of time to do what he wants to do in your life and in our church. Israel waited hundreds of years for the Messiah to come. But the Bible says, when the right time came, God sent his son. Galatians 4, verse 4. When the right time came, God's timing is always perfect. When the, when the time is right, he'll answer all our prayers. I hope like me, you will wonder and wait with anticipation to see what the surprises God has in store for us all in 2024. Can't believe we're saying that, 2024. I, for one, can't wait to see what he's going to do. And I look around and I wonder how many of us will be like Mary, and break out in song and in dance because of the plan that God has in store for us. We don't think it's going to be difficult. We just rejoice that God has chosen us. We can't know what Mary was thinking, but we do know that she sang a song of faith, a song that we all can sing, that we are to trust in our God. No matter the situation, no matter what the circumstance, God has his hand on it. We should try and strive to imitate the heart and the mind of Mary in every situation. A remarkable young woman. Her words are not just for an Advent season, they're for all seasons. Will you make room and welcome Jesus into your heart and home this Christmas? as Mary did. When you do, he will bring you the hope, the peace, joy, and love that your life desires and needs. The time's near here. It's time to welcome the baby Jesus. It's time to share the announcement of his birth with everyone we, we know. And it's time to wait and see what he has in store for us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, please give us a song to sing like Mary. Let our lives magnify your greatness and our hearts rejoice in you as our Savior and Lord. We wonder why you chose us just as Mary must have wondered, why me? But your plans are perfect. And so we ask today to give us the faith to trust in you, Lord, to help each of us to be your servants who are willing to put you first and live lives that glorify your name. May we be ready for the coming of the baby Jesus. May we be waiting in anticipation for that tap on the shoulder from the Holy Spirit that tells us to go. You are chosen. We ask it all in your precious name. Amen. I invite you to stand with us as we sing our, our final song for today and I said please have a coffee have, hang about at the back um, take a little run up as we said earlier to um, the parlor up here 
you'll see on a table over by on your right hand side when you get up there um, lots of lovely cards and I've only put some on the mind there, there was a pile that came from Lincoln McCandless school that was this thick uh, and that's just to thank us for putting snacks into all of their classrooms that f have fed them for the last six weeks and we will be stocking up again when, when they get, get back. But um, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm hoping we'll see you on Christmas Eve. Please take a breath and try and slow down in the, 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 this week and just know that God's grace is all that, that, that we need and it's enough for us. Let's sing, His grace is enough. The great is your faithfulness, O oh God. wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So
go with the peace of God and go and enjoy this week and make him center of everything that we do. Hopefully see you Christmas Eve.